It's officially the midpoint of Hollow Week. Previously, I showed you how to make shrunken heads out of apples and then a magic spell book. And today I'm going to be showing you how to make bleeding candles. This is actually kind of a two for one sort of video because I had one idea stuck in my head, but it's kind of advanced. But I wanted to also provide something that would be easier to do, especially since this is just a few days before Halloween. It doesn't take as long basically, as what I originally wanted to do. I did have a few hiccups with this project, surprisingly on the easy version, but of course I'm going to tell you what happened and from my mistakes and misfortunes, you guys benefit because I can tell you how to avoid them. So let's get started. To make bleeding candles, you'll need solid red candles, they need to be red wax all the way through, white wax, a heat safe container to melt the wax in, two containers tall enough to fit your candles. One needs to be heat resistant because it will have hot wax in it, and the other, it doesn't matter, it's just going to have cold water. Thin wire and a small knife. And then to make the skull with bleeding eyes, you'll need a skull to be molded, modeling clay. I actually didn't have any of this. So I just used polymer clay and it worked just fine for what I needed. Pourable mold making silicone, I'll leave an affiliate link to down below. Foam core, hot glue, an X-Acto knife. Alternatively, if you don't want to make your own mold, you can probably find a suitable skull mold online somewhere. It just needs to have deep set eye sockets in order for the bleeding effect to work. A red candle that would fit in said mold. I grabbed two just in case, one round one and a short cylinder one. The cylinder is what worked best for me. White wax, a heat safe container to melt the wax in, and a small weight. Cut up the wax into chunks, throw it into a heat resistant container, and put that into a pot of simmering water. While it's melting, prep your candles. Stick the wires through the wick, and now you have something longer to grab onto. In one of your tall containers, pour some cold water. Keep in mind that dipping the candles will displace the water, so you don't want to fill it up all the way or it will overflow. When the wax is totally melted, pour it into the other heat-proof container. Again, the wax will displace when you start dipping the candle in, so you really want to make sure you don't overfill the hot wax. And now, you start dipping. Hold the candle by the wire and dip it into the wax. Pull it out, let it drip a little bit, and then dip it into the cold water. Hold it in the water for a few seconds so that the wax can harden. Pull it out, wipe off the excess water. I dipped until the candle looked mostly white. Keep in mind though that with each dip, your candle is getting bigger and bigger, so if you're going to put it into a candle holder, you'll need to carve away the bottom a bit to take it back to the original shape. Once you're done, trim the drippy bits off the bottom, and then like I just mentioned, Trim the bottom so that it's small enough to fit in a candle holder if that's what you want to put it in. Hang the candle up to let it cool and harden completely. And then you're done! So when I started carving the bottom of the tall candles so that they could fit in two candle holders, I realized that these ones weren't going to work that well. These two ended up being white candles that were dipped in red wax at the end, so they look red but the wax drippings ended up being pink from the red wax mixing with the inner core of white. Thankfully, this shorter, wider candle I got was actually red all the way through, so with this one I did get the nice bleeding effect that I was looking for. This thing fit perfectly into one of my skull candle holders that I made last year. And you don't have to limit yourself to just red for these. I've seen people do ones where they drip black or purple, I've seen black candles that drip red. You can do any combination, really. And now for the awesome, and probably one of my favorite recent projects, the Skull Candle. When I was younger, I went to a candle making store and they sold gargoyles that would bleed from their eyes as they burned, and it just blew my mind. And when I was brainstorming ideas for Hollow Week, my mind went to that, and I thought that it would be cool and doable to make a skull candle like that. I found the perfect size skull at my craft store, but the jaw was hinged and the holes and stuff in the mouth were going to be too complicated to pour a simple mold, so I took some clay and shoved it into the parts that I felt would be problem areas. The mouth, the cheeks, etc. I also built up the base a little bit to make it tilt forward just a little bit more. To make the mold, hot glue your skull onto a piece of foam core, running a bead of hot glue around the edge. 
If there are any gaps around the bottom edge, fill them in with hot glue. If you don't, the silicone will seep in and it will cause you to have to do way more cleanup. Take a piece of foam core that's a few inches taller than your skull, position it about an inch or so away from the skull, and hot glue it in place. Repeat this a few more times to build the rest of the walls of your mold. I only did four walls, but looking back on it, I really should have done like eight, cutting the corners like so. This was actually the first poured silicone mold that I've ever made, so I was being overly cautious about how much extra silicone I needed on the sides. I was scared the rubber was going to be too weak, so I made the sides kind of thick. But of course, now after having made the mold, I know that I could have made them a little bit thinner. Make sure you seal the crap out of this thing along the bottom and on the sides. I kept my hot glue gun hot as I poured the silicone, just in case there were any leaks, I could quickly try to plug it up with the hot glue. Anyway, mix together your silicone according to the instructions. The stuff I'm using is called Umu 25. You mix up equal parts and it sets up in about 75 minutes. I'll leave an affiliate link to the stuff that I used down below. I used all of the silicone, so I didn't really need a special measuring cup, but if you're going to do a smaller amount, containers like this are great for being able to measure everything out. Mix everything up according to the instructions. Try not to add too much air into the mix as you're doing this. Pour into the mold. I've seen it recommended to pour in one spot at the lowest point of the mold because the silicone will level out on its own and you may just end up causing air pockets if you move the stream around too much. Pour from a height and make the stream kind of thin because this helps to break up air bubbles as it pours. So, I ended up not having enough silicone, which was pretty annoying, so I had to overnight some. If I had just built the walls of the mold a little bit smarter, I potentially may not have needed to buy another batch, but I mean, this was my first time doing a silicone mold like this, so thankfully the silicone sticks to itself. So I just put it aside, and then when I received the silicone, I mixed some more up, and then poured it in. This batch was super thick and not at all like how it was when I first used it. I mixed it for the same amount of time so I'm not sure what I did wrong or if I did anything wrong to begin with. I was assuming that maybe it was the weather, but I'm not sure. If anybody has experience with using this kind of mold and you know why it was like that, then please let me know. It didn't end up mixing together as well because it was so thick and again, since it was so thick, it caused a few air bubbles which since I'm casting in wax, it's not that big of a deal. I was able to just carve them away. But if you were doing something with resin or something like that, well, it would be really annoying. But it did still cure and got hard and rubbery like I needed it to, so it did its job. Anyway, let that cure all the way, and then you can demold. The tricky part is pulling the skull out of the bottom of the mold. I was hoping that I could just pull it out without having to cut into the mold, but that proved to be way too difficult, so I had to cut a little slit down the back. If you have to do this, cut a wavy line like this about halfway into the mold. Then hold the two parts away from each other and then cut as straight of a line as you can on the inside. The straight line on the inside of the mold will hopefully hide that mark and the wavy line on the outside will help everything register correctly when you squeeze it back together. If you have to cut one of these slits, you'll also need to keep two pieces of the foam core that are the same size as the sides. I just used the mold that I ripped apart and it worked out fine. Pull the skull out and there you go. Now you have a mold. Clean it out if you need to. I had some paint stuck in there that I didn't bother to clean and it transferred to the wax when I molded it, but that wasn't a big deal for me because I could easily scrape it away. Put your red candle into the mold. You want to position it so it's touching the two protruding bits that are the eye sockets. So I originally tried to use hot glue to do two things, attach the candle to the mold and to form a barrier that the white wax won't be able to pass so that whenever I demold it, I can easily access the wick and not have to dig for it. Silly me, of course, the hot glue didn't stick to the silicone, so it didn't serve its purpose in that way, but it did an all right job at forming a barrier. I think next time I do this, I'll maybe just make a disc of polymer clay or modeling clay and lay it between the mold and the candle, which then I'd remove after demolding the candle. Anyway, since it didn't attach the candle, I had to use a small weight to keep the candle in place and to prevent it from floating. I used a small jeweler's block for this. Melt your wax. Once it's melted, 
pour a small amount into the mold, just enough to hold the red candle in place. Let the wax harden, and then you can remove the weight. Now you can finish pouring the rest of the wax. I probably should have been more mindful about how hot the wax was. I had just pulled it off of the stove, so it melted the red candle a little bit, which caused the base to be a little pink. Let that harden and cool, and then you can unmold it. Like I mentioned earlier, there were a few spots where I had air bubbles, so I just used a blade to cut those off. And the wax broke through the hot glue barrier that I tried to make, but thankfully it was still really easy to remove. And then it's done! Now burn the candle and wait for the bleedy eye effect to start. It took a while for me, but once it did, it looked awesome. I mean, even before it started working, it looked awesome. It was a glowing skull on my desk, which then suddenly started bleeding from its eyes. Since the red candle is touching the eye sockets, when you pour the wax, the white wax is extremely thin in those spots, and then when the wax starts to melt in that area, it melts holes, allowing the wax to flow out. If you're worried that your red candle isn't close enough to the eye sockets to achieve this effect, you could just poke some holes into the eyes until they reach the red candle. I hope you all enjoyed this week's video. If you did, please leave a like, and if you want to see more, then feel free to subscribe. Every day this week, I am posting Halloween-themed DIYs. Patrons, thank you again. Your support helped me produce this series a lot easier this year, so thank you. If you are interested in becoming a patron, or you want to learn what it is, I'll leave a link right here. You can go check it out. You can follow me on Twitter, Tumblr, Instagram, Pinterest, or Snapchat, and I'll leave the information to those down below. If you have any questions or suggestions for future videos, please leave a comment down below, and I'll see you tomorrow.